all this is Sahite on behalf of Edu Reka and I welcome you to this session on automation anywhere IQ bots. So in this session guys will mainly focus on IQ bots of automation anywhere. So without wasting any further time, let's take a look at the topics for today's session. So we'll start today's session by understanding what is automation anywhere and then I'll tell you what are the different types of bots in automation anywhere. After that, I'll talk about what are IQ bots and then I'll give you an idea about the IQ bots process workflow. Once you understand the theory part of the session, we'll move on to the hands on part of the session and we'll look into how we can create instances and how we can train a bot, right? So I hope the agenda is clear to you guys. All right, so now before I move on with the session, I would like to request all of you to subscribe to our Edureka YouTube channel to get daily notified on the top trending technologies to upscale your career, right? So on that note, let's get started with the first topic for today's session. That is what is automation anywhere. Now people who already know RPA must be knowing that you know automation anywhere is an RPA tool. But for people who are new to the RPA world, let me tell you that robotic process automation is a simple process to automate tasks in such a way that you know there's no human intervention required, right? So when I say robotic process automation or RPA, I mean that you know it's a process to automate tasks either it could be simple or complex in such a way that you know the human intervention is reduced now to reduce the human intervention what happens in the RPA industry is that you know physical robots do not work right so instead of physical robots what work is basically the RPA softwares or RPA tools and automation anywhere is one of the most popular tools in the RPA market so on that note if you have to understand automation anywhere then automation anywhere is an RPA tool whose motive is to provide its users with scalable secure and resilient services. This tool has recently launched a community edition to first let you explore and automate tasks and once you think you have an hands on experience in this particular tool, you can go forward with the enterprise edition, right? If I have to summarize automation anywhere for you, then automation anywhere is the summation of robotic process automation plus cognitive automation plus workforce analytics, right? So automation anywhere is one such RPA tool which provides various number of features and functionalities to make your life easy and so that you know you can automate simple to complex tasks, right? Now, as Eddie Reka is an official training partner of Automation Anywhere, I would like to tell you that you know you can go forward with the certification of Automation Anywhere so that you can get an access to their enterprise edition and then you can practice a lot of tasks in such a way that you know you can automate simple to complex, right? So go forward and check out our certification. So now that you know what automation anywhere is, let's next look into what are the different types of bots offered by automation anywhere. So the different types of bots offered by automation anywhere are the task bots, meta bots and the IQ bots. So talking about the task bots, the task bots are the core of automation which execute repetitive rule based tasks. So basically these tasks are very easy to build and you can execute multi step processes with no errors using the automation anywhere workbench and that is where basically you can build the task bot. Moving on to meta bots. So the meta bots are the next type of bots available in automation anywhere. Now these bots are the advanced bots to that of the task bots. So meta bots are basically used to automate applications on a PC and can be created using application APIs, visual captures and integration flow, right? Now after meta bots comes the third type of bots that is the IQ bots. So the IQ bots are the next generation intelligent bots that allow the developers to add cognitive capabilities to the process. So these bots use cognitive capabilities to extract information from semi or unstructured data. Apart from this, IQ bots also learn to detect patterns so that the next time the pattern is encountered, the bot knows exactly what has to be done, right? So that was about the three kinds of bots, guys. That is the task bot, meta bots, and IQ bots. So if you want a detailed understanding of all these kinds of bots, you can refer to my session on automation anywhere bots. But since this particular session is mainly focusing on IQ bots, I'll be only talking about IQ bots in this particular session. So on that note, let's next look into what are IQ bots, right? So the IQ bots distinguish and categorize data types and formats by applying multiple layer of classification methods. They also use machine learning techniques to recognize the patterns. IQ bots also store human expertise using semantic models and leverage existing automation platforms. They also offer a variety of triggers such as emails, files, folders, workflows and so on and feed the data to task bots, right? So if you have to just understand IQ bots guys, then IQ bots are basically a type of bots which allow cognitive automation with the help of machine learning techniques, right? So guys, this was all about IQ bots. So now that you know a basic understanding of what IQ bots are, 
let's look into what is the IQ bots process workflow. Now talking about IQ bots process workflow guys as I was telling you before also IQ bots process unstructured or semi structured data, right? So for example, let's say you know you have a set of documents. So basically those set of documents are not similar. So when I say not similar what I mean by that is you know you can have invoices right now those invoices can be of different types. So when I say the format of the data presented in those invoices can be in different formats, right? So maybe a specific invoice has a specific set of data values and they're represented in let's say you know X format and maybe those particular format and data values is not present in the invoice B right now since the data is not in a structured format and we have unstructured data this particular data can be processed using IQ bots and they go to cognitive solution console. So that is basically the IQ bot console where you know we create learning instances and then you train the bot. Once we train the bot you can see the performance report or you can generate the performance report and then validate the results, right? So when I say validate the results what I mean by that is you know you can see what data has been extracted whether the data has been extracted right or wrong or maybe you know if the data is not extracted in a proper format then you can again go back and then train the data again, right? Now after everything is done on the IQ bot console finally you can just store the extracted data in a CSV format, right? So whatever data has been stored you can store it as per your needs. So if you just have to understand the process workflow guys, it's really simple. You initially create a bot and then when you create a bot or a learning instance, you basically mention the details. Once the details are mentioned, you start classifying the data. So when I say classifying the data, what I mean by that is, you know, let's say you know you have 10 invoices in a folder. Now out of those 10 invoices, let's say four of them are of similar type and then other two are of similar type and then there are you know four more of different type. So we have a group of four to four, right? So what happens is that you know when I say classify automatically when you train a bot all the three type of invoices will be basically grouped into different groups, right? So a group of four invoices will be grouped as group one a group of two invoices will be grouped as group two and the third type of group will be group three, right? So basically this is how you classify the data and once you classify the data what happens is that you know you train the bot. So when I say train the bot what I mean by that is you know you have to define the actions for one invoice. So when I say one invoice what I mean by that is then you can take one invoice from group one group two or group three and then you can train the bot to understand what data has to be extracted and stored for that particular group right. For example let's say you know you take one invoice from group one. And then what happens is that you know automatically the bot will be trained to process the other invoices of the same group, right? So all the other three invoices will be automatically processed for this particular group, right? Similarly goes for other groups and once you think that you know your bot is ready in the staging area You can go forward and push the bot into the production area where you can deploy the bot, right? Now automation anywhere is one such platform guys where we have a humongous amount of bots deployed into production, right? So you can always go forward and train your bot and then upload the bot into production, right? So now on that note since you've understood what are IQ bots and what is the process workflow of IQ bots? Let's look into a hands-on where I'll show you how you can create instances and how you can train your bot, right? So let's get started. So before I move forward, let me launch my IQ bot. So when you download your automation anywhere enterprise edition or a community edition, you get a separate email which says you know go to IQ bot login page and then you get your username and password, right? So this particular page is basically the login page for IQ bot. So what I'll do is I'll mention my username and password. So let me just copy from here and let me just paste again over here, right? And then I'll log in. All right. Now once I log in, this is basically your IQ bot login page where you clearly see that you know welcome to IQ bot free trial. So since we're working on free trial, we see this home page of welcome to IQ bot free trial. Now to start training your bot and to start using IQ bots, what you have to do is you have to go to learning instances and then you can start creating new instances, right? So as you can see on my screen, I've already created few instances, but for this particular session, I'll start all over again and then I'll show you how you can create instances, right? So let's get started. So to start creating instances, just click on this option of new instance. And once you click on this option of new instance, you see the area, right? That is create, classify, train, and production. So that is basically the workflow that I was explaining you before, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start creating the learning instance. So our first step is to basically mention information like, you know, instance name, document type, description, and primary language for documents. So what I'll do is I'll just mention, let's say, you know, example, and then description to be, let's say, demo. 
document type is basically the type of document or you can say the type of domain on which you want to basically process data. Now since we are working on a free trial version, we only have options of invoices, purchase orders, bank statements and credit memo. Well, this is not the end to the story guys. If you have your enterprise edition and then if you have an access to the IQ bot, you'll get an access to all these type of documents that you wish to. Since we're working on free trial version, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go for invoices. And then what I'm going to do is I'll mention the primary language to be English since you know our invoices are present in English. Well, you can go for any other language that you wish to also. So this is basically, you know, a simple information that you have to give to your bot that this is the bot name and then this is basically the document type that I want to process and this will be the primary language for the documents. So over here, I'm going to process invoices in English language. After that, what you have to do is you have to upload your documents. Now, since I do not have any sort of documents which I want to, you know, upload over here, what I'll do is I'll just download sample documents from over here and then you'll see that, you know, automatically my documents are getting downloaded. So I'll wait for that to happen and then I'll upload those particular documents. Now also over here since we're working on trial version again, the maximum single page documents which are allowed is 10. So over here we can just upload 10 documents. Now since in this session, I'm going to show you how the bots are going to be trained. What I'm going to do is I'm going to process similar invoices presently and then I'll show you how you can process different invoices also, right? So over here we have two sets of hands on that is initially I'm going to show you how to process similar invoices and then I'll show you how you can process data for different invoices. So let's go back. All right. So my file is downloaded. So I'll just open show in folder and then what I'll do is I'll open this folder again and then you can see that you know we have bank statements credit memo invoices purchase orders and utility bills. Now since I've chosen for invoices, I'm going to click on invoices over here and then you see that you know we have a sample of 10 invoices. So let's open these invoices. So I'll just view by large icons. Right. So what I'll do is I'll just open these invoices and then maybe we can find out if you know these are similar type of invoices or different types. So let me just open these invoices one after the other. All right. So you see that you know there's a difference in the fifth invoice and the sixth invoice, right? So we have mainly two types over here till now. And then there's one more type of invoice that is the angel traders one. So if you observe over here, we have mainly three type of invoices that is invoice number 10. Then we have invoice number eight and then we also have invoice number five. So this is basically an example that I'm taking randomly that you know, we have three type of invoices five a type of this particular invoice a type of other invoice and then a type of the third type of invoice like this. Now if you observe over here, maybe in all these type of invoices, the data values could be different and even the way in which the data is stored is different. So if you see the first invoice we have sold to ship to and then we have invoice number date purchase order quantity and so on. Apart from that, if you go to the second invoice, what we can clearly see that we have few details like invoice number invoice date purchase order and so on. But the point over here is that they're represented in a different format. So over here, the data becomes unstructured again. And then if we consider the third type of invoice, the third type of invoice also has the same issue. That is that like, you know, we have date invoice number customer ID. Also few data values are different over here and the data is represented in a different format. Now our task is to basically process the similar invoices. So what I'm going to do is in all the 10 invoices that I opened over here, we can clearly see that, you know, we have similar invoices from invoice number one to five. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to process these documents initially. So now what I'll do is I just copy this particular folder and let's say, you know, I paste it on my desktop. So I have a folder name invoices page on my desktop, right? So now what I'll do is I'll go back to my IQ bot page. I'll click on browse and then when I click on browse, I'll go to desktop over here and then I'll choose this option of invoices. Then I'll choose open. And once I choose open, let me just, you know, increase my icon size so that you can clearly see, right? So over here, you can see that, you know, we have similar invoices from one to five. So what I'll do is I'll select all these invoices from one to five and then I'll click on open. So you can see that, you know, as soon as you click on open, you see an output that, you know, you've selected five files to upload. Now, after that, what you have to do is you have to choose the fields to extract. 
So when I say fields to extract, what I mean by that is that you know a particular invoice can have different fields like sold to, shipped to, invoice number, date, purchase order, and so on. So we have to choose which fields that we wish to extract. Now in the field section, there are mainly two types. That is basically the standard table fields and the standard form fields. So this is basically the standard form field section and this is basically the standard table field section. So starting with standard form fields as you can see that you know we have few information already checked in like you know invoice number date total and other invoice number date total. What you can do is you can always do plus and minus over here. So for example, let's say you know I also want to store the purchase order number. What I can simply do is I can go back to my IQ bot page and then I can choose for purchase order number over here. And similarly in the table fields also I can always check or uncheck any of these boxes. So let's say you know I want to also find out the item number so I can just click on this option of item number and then you'll automatically see that you know once the data is extracted the item number will be stored. So apart from that guys if you want to add any particular field you can always go forward and add. For example, let's say you know I want to add a field. Let's say terms, right? So terms, it's two percent and ten, right? So what I can do is I can just mention terms over here, and then I can choose it to be either as a add as form field or a table field. So if I just mention terms over here, that is basically the name of the field that I want to give, and then if I mention add as form, you can see that you know automatically the field terms will be added into our form fields, right? Now once everything is done that is basically what you've done over here is you've given the general information about your instance that is basically the document type which has to be processed and what will be the primary language to it and what will be the instance name. After that you've uploaded your documents and then you've chosen which fields to extract either from the form fields or the table fields. After that you can just click on create instance and analyze. So let's wait for the instance to be created. Now once the instance is getting created you see that you know you'll be redirected to this particular page where it clearly shows that you know the documents are getting analyzed right. So you can see the data getting processed like you know applying classifier performing cementing analysis and so on right. So let's wait for our documents to be processed. And once our documents have been processed you'll be basically redirected to this particular page where you have to check if the results are mapped correctly or not. So when I say results are mapped correctly or not what I mean that is that you know when I'm going for invoice number that is basically my invoice number is over here. I have to see whether the field value is extracted correctly or not. So since it is correct guys we don't have to change but let's see you know if there was any error what you can do is you can always go to this option of draw over here and then you can drag your mouse over the section from which you want to extract the data. So since it's correct I'm not going to change anything over here. Similarly I'll go for invoice date. So when I click on invoice date you can clearly see that you know the invoice date is this particular section and then the field value is 22 August 2018 which is absolutely fine. Again we'll go for invoice total. So invoice total is basically our invoice amount and then 53.50 is extracted which is fine again. We'll check for purchase order number also the purchase order goes to purchase order over here and this particular data has been extracted. Similarly if you go to another form field that is terms that if you remember I just created this particular form field and then automatically you see that you know this particular data has been extracted. Now this was all about form fields. So if I go for description over here you can see that you know it's not getting extracted clearly right. So what I can simply do is I can always go and I can just drag my section over here. Right so if I drag my section over here you can see the column name is changed as radio coolant. So since we want the column name to be description and the column value to be text what I'll do is I'll draw again over here and then it will clearly show description and the column value will be automatically taken from this particular value right. So in form fields what is happening is that you know whatever field that you choose you see which data is getting extracted from the form in table fields it's basically with respect to columns. So you basically have to make sure that you know your column name is correct. And then automatically that particular column value will be stored into the table field. Similarly if you check quantity then this particular column values will be taken. So you'll see a value of 10 when you extract the data. So apart from that over here I also want to show you one thing over here that is basically the column value type. Now this is like a data type that you decide for the data that has to be extracted. So this is something which is very important that you have to consider also. So the quantity is also fine. Now let's check item total. The item total goes for amount and then we see what data is extracted. That is basically number. The item number is basically our coolant. So automatically this particular column is also fine. So now since all the form fields and the table fields are fine. 
what you can simply do is you can go and see the extraction results. So if you just want to verify the extraction results, you see that you know invoice number is 10285, which is right. Invoice date is 22nd August. Invoice total is 53.50. Purchase order number is 26541. Terms is 2% at 10. So that seems fine. Similarly, table values. So item description is radiant coolant, which is fine again. The quantity is 10, which is fine. Item total is 50, which is fine again from the amount. Item number is coolant, which is fine again. So this seems fine to you, right? So this is basically how you can train your IQ board, right? So if you understand over here, what I've done is I've chosen my document type and the document language. And then what I did was as soon as all the documents were analyzed, I just verified my results for one particular document. That is out of all the five documents that I chose, I verified the results for one particular document. And once you think that, you know, it is fine, what you can simply do is you can just export the data to the CSV. So you can export the data to a CSV and you'll automatically see that, you know, a CSV file will be downloaded. So let's open this. So when I export the data to CSV, you can see that, you know, automatically the invoice date, the invoice total and so on, whatever we saw till the date have been extracted over here. So now what we can do is we can go back to our training part. Right, and then what we can do is we can just save and close. Once we save and close, it will ask you for a confirmation whether you want to save your current training or you want to cancel. So I'll just click on save. Once we click on save, you'll see that, you know, we have completed the trial of learning instance example. So after that, what we can do is we can select a learning instance and then we can click on the train button. Once we see the extraction results, we'll export the data to a CSV file. So I'll just click on close over here. Right, and then once I click on close, you can clearly see that you know the creation is done. That is basically a bot is created, and then the bot is classified also. Over here, if you clearly observe, we see this option of document groups, right? So this is basically the data of our learning instance. So now, if you have a doubt of you know why group only one, that was because we chose similar type of documents, right? So we chose five invoices which were similar together. So there is only one group. Apart from this, if we have two type of invoices. You'll clearly see that you know we'll have two different groups. So don't worry. I'll be showing you that also. So if I just click on summary over here, you can see that you know the environment is staging the domains is invoices. The language is English and so on, right? So we get all the staging results and once you think the staging is fine, you can go ahead and put it in production. But since we are working on a trial version, this particular feature is not enabled in our trial version. So you can only create your bot and then deploy it in the staging area, but you cannot go forward and put it in the production area. So what I can do is I can just go back to document groups over here and then I can just train the bot. Once I click on train the bot, you can clearly see that, you know, again, we come back to the same page. So once you think everything is fine, you can just go to see extraction results and then you can just keep clicking on this particular arrow to see the different results of all the five invoices, right? So if I just keep clicking this arrow, you'll see that you know I'm going to different different invoices and the data is changing over here. So what we can do is we can just again export to CSV. If you observe we have the data of three invoices, you can always go forward and train your data for as many invoices as you want. So if I go back to example over here again, and then if I see document groups, we can see that you know number of training is five and then if we go to staging area, you can see that you know the number of documents unclassified is zero. The bots created is one and the groups found is also one and so on. So if I click on edit guys, you can clearly see again, you know, which type of documents that you want to upload and then maybe if you want to make any changes, you can definitely go forward and make changes related to your instance. So guys, that was about how you can train the similar invoices. Now similarly you can train different invoices also. So what you can simply do is you can go back to learning instances over here and then what you can do is you can just you know go and create new instances, right? All right. So let me just you know delete few instances so that you know we get an option to create new instances again. Just click on delete instance over here. Please time the name of the learning instance to confirm which is learning underscore four, right? All right. Now once I've created an instance, you can clearly see that you know automatically I get an option to create a new instance again. So now since I was talking about processing different invoices, what we can simply do is we can go to new instances again 
and let's say we mention the name to be example 2 let's say description to be demo let's say document type to be invoices again and primary language to be english we'll go for browse and then what i'll do is i'll select this particular invoice let's say i select this particular invoice again and let's say i select this particular invoice so we here we can see that you know we have basically four kinds of invoices i'm sorry previously i was telling you that you know there were three kinds of invoices but yes there are four kinds of invoices so uh, what i'll do is i'll just select all the four of them and then i can click on open once i click on open you'll see that you know you've selected four files to upload now what i'll do is i'll just let the form fields and the table fields to be same and then i'll just click on create instance and analyze once i click on that you'll see that you know automatically the documents are getting analyzed so let's wait for that to happen once the documents are analyzed you're basically redirected to this particular page where you again have to choose or i would say basically review what data fields have been mapped and what data will be extracted so i'll just do that very quick let's say you know invoice number will be mapped to 10 to 89 that's fine invoice date will be 22nd august invoice total will be around this particular amount that is twelve thousand dollars similarly item description item description table value will be this particular text quantity will be these three texts and item total will be extracted from this particular amount now after you are done reviewing this particular section either you can go and choose see extraction results where you'll see the extraction results or what you can do is you can save and go to the next group so once you click on save you basically save this particular training and then you move forward right so basically you've trained the bot to read those particular invoices so basically those type of invoices could be read so you've trained your bot for invoices of type a similarly you have to train your bot for invoices of type b so again let's say you know we have invoice number field label will be invoice number and field value will be 100139 that's fine invoice date again will be 822018 that's fine invoice total will be again the amount which is 1700 similarly you'll have to check for your table values also item description will be description the different quantity available and item total will be the amount and then you can just click on save and close once you click on save and close you'll see that you know your training has been successful so over here what you can do is you can just click on close over here and then you'll see that you know automatically two groups have been created right so that is group one and group two so after choosing four invoices we see that you know only two groups are created that is group one and group two and in group one and group two you can clearly see that you know the number of invoices in group one are three and number of invoices in group two are one after that what you can simply do is you can just again go to train and then you can see the extraction results for example let's say you know if you want to see for group one you can always go and edit the bot and then you can see the extraction results and then you can save and go to the next group so what i'll do is i'll go back to example two over here i'll click on train and once i click on train what i'll do is i'll just choose see extraction results and once i click on see extraction results you'll see that only one document results are shown similarly if i go to example two again and let's say you know i'll train the data for group one right so i'll click on edit bot over here and let's say i see the extraction results so once i see the extraction results you'll see that you know you can see on the left hand side that is for invoice six and then we have an invoice eight and then we also have one more invoice that is invoice number one so what we can simply do is we can just export to csv so iq bots is really simple guys what you have to do is you have to train the bot for one particular file and automatically it will understand how the other files have to be read so if you upload any two different kinds of files also it will basically divide those files into two different groups and then you have to train your bot for both those groups once you train your bot you'll automatically see that you know all the other files which are similar to the files present in those groups automatically the data will be processed from those files so with this we come to an end to this particular session on iq bots i hope you found this session informative as i was telling you before edureka is an official training partner of automation anyway so if you want to go forward and learn iq bot and then if you want to practice a lot of cognitive automation you can go forward and enroll yourself into a certification program which will help you learn how to automate simple to complex tasks and use various functionalities and features of automation anywhere in depth so that's all from my side today until next time thank you and happy learning i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video 
Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!